five minus two thousand euros we'd expect the project to make 943 euros okay so what we can really see here now is this is depending on the interest rate the true position with respect to the net present value uh, can change considerably okay? but let's just create a graph because we want to try to understand what this internal rate of return is okay so let's create a vertical axis and a horizontal axis and let's this horizontal axis here represent interest rates let's say interest rates okay interest rates and we've got so many different interest rates we could choose from okay let's say we have 5 10 15 percent 5 10 15 percent okay these are percentages okay okay and let's have the vertical axis represent the net present value so this is the NPV or the net present values of our project okay and the net present values uh, go from, well, 943 to 1871. So let's just go up in thousands. Let's say this is a thousand, and let's say this is two thousand. So we have a thousand, and this is two thousand. And what we have is this is that when interest rates are 5%, the net present value for the project is 1871. So when it's 5%, it's 1871, which is in around here somewhere. When the interest rates are running at 15%, the net present value is 943. So 943 is in here somewhere, okay, at 15%. And what we end up with is we end up with a, a linear, well, we have two points, and what we can do is we can draw the line through them two points, okay, we can draw the line through them two points until it comes down and cuts the horizontal axis, okay, until it cuts the horizontal axis here. And this particular value here, okay, where these, this line cuts the horizontal axis is known as the internal rate of return. Because that's the interest rate that will result in a net present value of zero for this project. In other words, that's the interest rate that will result in a break-even point for this particular project. So this here is known as the internal rate of return, or the IRR. Okay. So let's see, can we construct a formula for this internal rate of return? Okay, so we have two points on a line, okay? We could always calculate the equation of the line, uh, and then we could always solve the equation for the line for when the y value, or when the net present value is equal to zero. This should give us a general formula for calculating the internal rate of return of our project when we have two net present values, and when we have two interest rates. So let's call this n. Let's call this i1 for interest rate one, and let's call this n2. Sorry, i2, i1, n1 uh, for the net present value one, and let's call this point here i2 for interest rate two, and n2 for the second net present value. Okay. So now let's try to construct this formula. So we have two points. Okay. So we have two points. Our points in space. Our points are I1, N1, and the other point that we have is I2, N2. Okay? In other words, we've done two net present value calculations at two different interest rates, and we have arrived at two different net present values. Uh, so as I said, we need to calculate the equation or figure out what the equation of this line is. Uh, and we have the general form of an equation of a line. Okay? Uh, so the equation of a line equation of a line uh, is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 okay where m is the slope of the line and x1 y1 is a single point on the line okay well we know x1 y1 it could be any one of these points and we're free to choose which one we want okay so the question is what's the slope of the line well the slope of the line the slope of a line given two points is m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay so let's say that in this particular situation here let's call just so that we have these here let's call this this is y2 x2 y2 this is x1 y1 so let's call this x1 y1 and let's call this x2 y2 so our slope would be m is equal to 
well, y2 is n2, minus y1 is n1, divided by x2 is i2, is the second interest rate, minus i1. So now we know a, the slope of the line, and then we're free to choose any point on the line and to use this equation of the line to solve for the line. Okay, so let's say m is equal to n2 minus n1 over i2 minus i1 and let's choose our points to be uh, i1 n1 and let's solve this equation so let's substitute everything in so we have the equation of the line so the line is going to be y minus y1 which is n1 is equal to m which is n2 minus n1 over i2 minus i1 that's our slope which has to be multiplied by x minus x1 which is which is i1 okay now we know okay that the point of intersection with the x-axis is when y is equal to zero so let let y equal zero okay and when we let y equal zero this becomes minus n1 is equal to n2 minus n1 over i2 minus i1 times x minus i1 okay let's solve for x uh, I suppose let's multiply each side of this line okay of this uh, this uh, equality sign by the inverse of this particular slope so let's multiply minus n1 by i2 minus i1 over n2 minus n1 okay that has to be equal to and let's multiply this side by it i2 minus i1 over n2 minus n1 okay? and that's multiplied by n2 minus n1 over i2 minus i1 times x minus i1 and what we have is that n2 minus n1 divided into n2 minus n1 gives us 1 i2 minus i1 divided into i2 minus 1 I1 gives us 1, 1 times 1 is 1, so this whole thing here cancels out with this, so we're left with minus n1 times i2 minus i1 divided by n2 minus n1 is equal to x minus i1, okay? Uh, okay, we're nearly there, okay? So let's now just multiply through the bracket okay actually let's bring the i1 over to the over to the to the left hand side of this equality so this becomes minus n1 times i2 minus i1 over n2 minus n1 plus i1 has to be equal to x okay uh, let's get a common denominator here so this becomes well the common denominator is n2 minus n1 and n2 minus n1 into here goes once, so this becomes minus n1 times i2 minus i1, okay? Plus uh, 1 into this goes n2 minus n1 times, so this becomes n2 minus n1 times i1 must be equal to x. Multiplying out the brackets, we end up with minus n1 i2 plus n1 i1 plus n2 i1 minus n1 i1 all over n2 minus n1 must be equal to x okay and what we can probably see here is that we have a minus n1 i2 here we have a plus i1 let's see can anything cancel out oh there we go we have an n1 i1 and a minus n1 i1 so these two things here cancel okay which leaves us with x is equal to on the top let's start with our positive terms it's n2 i1 minus n1 i2 divided by n2 minus n1 so when y is zero okay, the line becomes x is equal to n2 i1 minus n1 i2 over n2 minus n1 and this x is the point of intersection of the of the x-axis when y is zero 
So actually what we have generated here is the internal rate of return. So the internal rate of return is simply equal to N2 I1 minus N1 I2 divided by N2 minus N1. So this is the formula that we use now to calculate the internal rate of return. So we can see that all we need to calculate the internal rate of return is two interest rates, I1 and I2, and their associated net present values, N1 and N2. And equipped with both of them points, we can calculate the internal rate of return of our project. Uh, so guys, I know that was pretty detailed in relation to the derivation. We started off with a particular example where for two different interest rates we calculate two net present values. We realized that we could plot these net present values in space where the horizontal axis represents the interest rates and the vertical axis represents the net present value for a project. Uh, we had two points in space. We know that the internal rate of return is the interest rate that results in a net present value of zero. So what we did was we solved by creating the equation of the line. Okay. So the equation of the line, find its slope, choosing its slope and a point on the line, uh, substituting them into our equation of our line, letting y equal zero. This is the important step because when y is equal to zero, that signifies that the net present value is zero. And all we did was then we just solved through some algebraic manipulations. We just solved until we arrived at a situation where we had x being equal to a particular term, or in this case, we have a quotient. Uh, and x, its interpretation, well, x is associated with when y is equal to, when y is equal to zero. So this x represents the internal rate of return. Okay, guys, I know that was a lot of work, uh, but I hope that will help you in relation to your understanding of the internal rate of return and the actual derivation of a formula to calculate the internal rate of return of a project. As I mentioned earlier on, if you're still a little bit unsure about how to calculate the present values, I would recommend that you go back to one of our previous videos that deals with the present value calculation. Okay, guys, uh, thank you for your time. This was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics and Support Service at the National College of Ireland.